Want to know the secret to painting a black airplane? You don't paint it black. So you finish building that black airplane and now you're thinking, hey, I just grab me some black paint and I'm done. And you could do that. And I know I've done that. But I also know it didn't quite look right because while the model is black, that black paint just disappeared all of the lines, the detail and the features of the model. There's nothing for your eyes left to enjoy. And from more than a foot away, it just looks like a silhouette and not really a replica. And please note, I'm not criticizing the builders here, I'm just illustrating a point about black painted models. So let's take a look at some of these all black aircraft. And these planes may have started out with a simple black paint, but look at what happens to it. Look at those shades and the paint wear and some crew oopses. In this video, I'm going for a well enjoyed Blackbird maybe a few extra miles on her. Definitely not driven by grandma to church on Sundays, but not an as is, where is build either. And I started with black primer. In this case, it was AK spray primer, but any black primer will do. This is the first time I was trying this product and it dried to a semi-gloss finish, which wasn't necessarily unwelcome, but it did make for tougher video shooting. Let's go back to a couple of those Blackbird shots. As you can see, the plane has some interesting wear patterns. There are also some interesting colors um, and the monotone black is really broken up. And there are also a few features that I definitely want to replicate. First, uh, I want to fade and, and be, break up that overall black paint color then I want to replicate those streaks that go down the sides of the plane. And lastly, the panel lines and those recessed um, divots or troughs, whatever they are on the wings, have accumulated a chalky look that I want to also get. I started the process by spraying some pre-shading in light gray using post-it notes to help me highlight some of the streaking on the panel lines. Using post-it notes this way instead of, say, tape allowed me to work quickly. And since this is pre-shading, you don't have to be too precise. I used various grays and deck tan to model the surface. And when I do this, I usually one, work one section at a time. The goal is not to be uniform, but to have a consistent look over the entire model. As you can see, I also tried to get those streaks using the airbrush and drawing thin lines, but ultimately I wasn't happy with the result of those and I'll show you a better way in a minute. So here we have um, the, the plane after our pre-shading and mottling and it looks absolutely horrible as it should, but once the blending starts, all this gets toned down nicely. In fact, this is the best part of this technique because it's so easy to tone it down. So don't be afraid to use light colors if you give it a try. To blend everything, I'm going in with a thin mix of Tamiya Nato Black with 10% Hull Red to warm it up. This was mixed at about uh, 30 to 40% paint to thinner so that I could build the main color slowly and carefully. And here it is after the top coat. It's still a little bit too much pre-shade pre showing, but I know that there was going to be more to come, so it's better to have a little more showing at this point than to, to try to cover it all. After the, the decals were, were dry, I used MIG ammo panel line wash to replicate that chalky panel line and those recessed wing ribs or trenches. Listen, I don't know what they're called. If anyone does, please say something in the comments because I'm actually quite interested in what these things are called. 
I've used these products in my videos and because they are, well, it's really because they're very easy to use. You brush them on, you let them dry, usually for about 30, 40 minutes, and then you wipe off the excess with Q-tips. And on a 148 scale Blackbird, I used a bushel of Q-tips, like an obscene amount of Q-tips. Thankfully, no one raises an eyebrow at the dollar store when I buy these a little too often. I said earlier that I was not happy with the airbrush streaking, so I tried some something new called MIG MO Streaking Brusher. And after watching a couple videos on how to use a product, I thought, why not? You just put down a few dots, and then I used a brush with just a hint of white spirits to streak down the sides. This thing was extremely easy to use, and I think that if you put on too much, you just really wet the brush and you can pretty much take it all off. And now you can see the overall results with the streaker. This was more what I was after with this look. And all that was left to do was to apply a tinted flat coat so that everything uh, could blend together. And I used Vallejo Matte Coat thinned with Windex. And I don't know, um, this, some, this stuff seems to like Windex and I don't argue when something works. Uh, there are about 40, oh, I'm sorry, there are about 80 or so drops of the mat with that was thinned down. And to that mix, I added about 10 drops of NATO black and a drop of hull red. And after that, uh, after that dried, I, I think, I, yeah, I needed to spray one more flat coat and I called it done. So there you have it, a black plane that really isn't black. But the detail pops and the result is more interesting to look at. Let me know what you think. And until next time, you only get better with practice and with taking risks. So see you next time.